Hi guys, just been <laughs> tidying up, you wouldn't believe it, and of course I always get sidetracked when I try and tidy up. Picked up this old cheap toy tank that I bought in 99p store, I think it was, a while back. It wasn't 99p actually, it was a bit more expensive, but only a couple of pounds anyway. But if you look back at some of my previous videos, I'd modified it a couple of times. Uh, I converted it to rubber band power, and then I converted it to just an electric motor driving it forwards, and that's all it did. Um, I think I used a single channel radio control just to switch it on and off, so it just went forwards. Anyway, in a recent video, I've been modifying radio control servos for continuous rotation. Uh, where's my battery? I'll put a link into the video where I did it, because I showed you how to take the servo apart and modify it. And it occurred to me that I could put two of these servos in the back of the tank to replace the wheels that were there, the axles that were there. And I could have, I think you call it skid steering. So you can either have them both going forwards or one forwards and one backwards and get the tank to turn. Or at least it's worth a try anyway. So I've had a little look. I found some wheels. I found a screw or a bolt that's just the right size to go through the wheels. Honest. Yep, there we go. And it's the right size thread to go into the end of the servo. It won't be very strong, that'll be quite weak, so I won't have to stand on it or anything. but we get a fairly slow rotation. So that should be all right to drive the tank backwards and forwards. So all I'm going to do is hot glue a couple of these straight in there. And that should give us our motion. If they stick up high enough, I think they do. Just put that bit back in place because that's just off. There we go. And if they don't, I'll have to lift them up a bit. They might just do it. If they're not high enough, then I'll have to cut the bodywork a bit so I can mount these in a bit further. I've had to cut the bodywork a bit now so that I can get the wheels low enough down because they have to stick out underneath these tracks because these are just fixed plastic tracks they don't really work so I think you can see looking across there we can see the wheels sticking out a bit so I have to do that on both sides and then I can fit my servos there's our two servos hot glued in place and the wheels just clearing the edge of the track, which is the same as the front wheels do anyway. So now we need to fit the radio receiver. I've soldered in the receiver from another toy car. Uh, that's the transmitter. It's one of those um, Lego clone toys. It's not actually Lego, but it's supposed to look like it. I've wired it up so I can use this little LiPo battery. I'll blue tack it in place in a minute. But so that looks like that works. Had to put a bit of weight on the back to make sure the wheels gripped properly because they were slipping when I tried it first. 
So we can go and try it out in the kitchen. I've given it a little test already and we're not getting enough grip really from those wheels. It does work but the steering is not quite as good as I'd hoped. The speed is quite nice. That's quite a scale speed. But the steering is not quite perfect. You can see it's slipping a bit. Oh, it's not too bad. Just show you how I fixed the problem with the steering being too, or the grip being too light. Got a load of lead weights in there, just to make sure the wheels stick on the ground. So it works, but it needs the extra weight to give it the steering. I think that's a success though. And this little controller works nicely. I'll put a link to the video where I made the, uh, I'll call it Lego, but it's not Lego, but there's a couple of Lego cars I made that this comes from. Christmas present for my grandson. So, that's it. Check out the video description for the links. So that will be a link to how to modify the servos to give you continuous rotation. And a link to where I got this radio control controller from. Job done.